Hello and welcome. In this section we will talk about the economics of energy storage. The first slide we already have seen when we have talked about classification on energy storage systems. And there we already said storage economics is a quite complex matter because it's much more than just comparing the investment costs of storage systems, for example, given in euro per kilowatt hour. So we need to take into account the power related costs for the charging and discharging units. We have energy related costs for the storage itself. We have different lifetimes of different storage alternatives that can be given in years or also maybe a number of cycles um, a storage system can do. Then we have different efficiencies of the charging of the discharging units and the storage itself. We have self-discharge rates for different storages and also the time that elapses between the charging and discharging uh, takes a role on the economics. And then the market boundary conditions because we need to pay for the energy that we charge, use to charge the storage and maybe we get some refunds when we sell the energy, when we discharge the storage. In this first part, in this first video, I will uh, explain the basics of the annuity methods and later we develop a methodology how we can judge on the economic boundary conditions of storages. I will do that as it is explained in the VDI guideline 2067 and that gives us a possibility that non-periodic and periodic payments in a given period are transformed into constant periodic payments for example on a yearly basis and that is then the annuity. We have the problem that goods like energy storage devices they have lifetimes of several years but with the investment A0 at the beginning of their life. And with them, they we can compare the annuity. And in case the given period is longer than the lifetime, maybe several replacement investments, A1 to AN, need to be made. And in case of the lifetime is longer than the given period, a residual value will remain. And so the overall annuity A and K is given by the sum of all the investments for the initial investments and also for the replacement investments minus the remaining residual value and all that times an annuity factor A. The annuity factor can be expressed with different equations depending on which we use either the interest loan for example 0.03 or the interest rate P is then 3% or we take the interest factor Q that would be then in that example 1.03. And with the Q the annuity factor would be Q to the T times in brackets Q minus 1 and that divided by Q to the T minus 1 and that is equal to Q minus 1 divided by 1 minus Q to the minus T. And when we use the interest loan, then it is 1 plus i to the t times i divided by 1 plus i to the t minus 1. In that table, we see this annuity factor for different interest rate p's from 3 to 8% and for different period t's ranging from 5 to 40 years. And then we see that the annuity factor is always bigger than the interest rate because in the given number of years we also have not only to pay interest, we also need to pay back uh, the loan. And here we see it in a graph. Uh, on the horizontal we have the given period in years ranging from 0 to 100 years and on the vertical it's the annuity factor. And then we have different graphs from 0 to 20% interest rate. And what we see when we have very short investments, only a few years, uh, then that decreases a lot with every year we get an additional lifetime. But for very small number of years, we also see 
that for different interest rates the annuity factor is quite close together because then uh, the payback of the investment plays a bigger role than the interest itself. But when we have long-term investments like we have in power stations also with some energy storages we see it is getting more or less horizontal uh, elapse that means it's not anymore that important if it is 40, 60 or 80 years of lifetime but we see a clear and strong dependency on the interest rate so econom economy of a storage and the power station strongly depends on the interest rate. When we need to calculate the annuity of the replacement investments A1 to AN then we do that when we multiply the initial investment A0 times R to the N times TN divided by Q to the N times TN and TN is here the useful life T the given period, R is the price change rate that we also can take into consideration like inflation rate for example and N is the number of the replacement investment. And then we have the residual value that remains when we stop considering the period of T years and that is again the initial investment multiplied with the price at the time of the investment R to the N times Tn, then we multiply it with the linear deduction n plus 1 times Tn minus T divided by Tn and then also divide it or multiply it with the discounting and we divide the quotient by Q to the T. And then apart from that initial investment costs we have periodic payments every year that could be the energy costs working materials etc that we express with the annuity a and v costs for maintenance cleaning inspection etc that we express by the annuity a and b and other costs like insurances taxes etc that we express with a and s and then sometimes we also get revenues for example when we sell electricity when discharging a storage then we have the A and E and all those annuities A and X are calculated by A X times the annuity factor times the price dynamic net present value B and how to calculate that price dynamic net present value we have the two equations here on the bottom and one expression when R is unequal Q and one expression when R is equal to Q. And then we get the overall annuity that is calculated by our annuity of the revenues when we sell electricity minus all the costs we have, all the annuity factors of the investments and all the other periodic costs. And then we can say that an investment is economically viable when the overall annuity is bigger than zero. Or quite often we don't have revenues then the annuity always is smaller zero but when we then compare different alternatives of investment or different alternatives of energy storages for a certain application case then we have the least costs that is the preferable energy storage solution. And now I do some simplifications on that method presented in VDI guideline 2067. Um, that makes our calculations easier but finally we will see that the result is quite similar or it's the same. Instead of a constant given period T for every alternative investment or even for every different technical component of an energy storage system we calculate with a different given period t and that results in the following that we set the lifetime of a storage system or even the lifetime of a component of a storage system equal to the given period and then we have tn equal to t and that results then that we have for every component for every storage we compare a different annuity or an individual annuity factor ae. And that 
gives us as a consequence that all the replacement investments will be zero and also the residual value is zero too. And therefore the annuity is just a i and k equal to the initial investment a i zero times the individual annuity factor. And also when we do our considerations, we just will ignore the price dynamics. They are quite important, but to have a prognosis of that is quite difficult. Will the price dynamics be positive or negative and how strong prices will increase or decrease? And that is a matter uh, that we should not deal with here in our consideration when we deal the economics on energy storages. Some quite famous quotations, um, most prognoses are good, but future doesn't care about or the one of Peter Ustinov with profits, one better discusses three years later. And maybe the most famous one from Mark Twain, prognosis are a difficult matter, especially when they concern future. So quite often reality is completely different than prognosis we do on price dynamics. So in the next video, we will use this method to develop a methodology to compare economics of different energy storages. And so far, thank you very much.